ascending to earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the roaring sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has brought toward us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun. Let us march on, let us march on, let us march on till victory is won. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Rome Neal's Banana Pudding Jazz. My name is Rome Neal and Banana Pudding Jazz is what I've been doing for the past 17 years at the world famous New Eureka Poets Cafe. And just past seven months, I've been doing it virtually on my StreamYard channel. And it's been a wonderful experience and it allowed me the opportunity to present this very special performance or evening for you, the audience, because uh, it's Black History Month and it's coming to a close. And uh, I've been fortunate to do a few things for Black History Month. And with one of them was my one man show, Monk by Lawrence Holder. Let's have a shout out for Lawrence Holder, the playwright whose birthday is today. And Lawrence Holder, who not only wrote the, the play for me, the one man show, Monk about the loneliest monk, but also wrote the play, When the Chickens Come Home to Roost, which starred Denzel Washington and Kurt Kirksey. He also wrote, the play Zora, which starred Felicia Richard. So um, there's another legend and a person to pay homage to this Black History Month. But this particular evening, I want to dedicate to a wonderful jazz happening in Brooklyn that I discovered some years ago and fell in love with. And uh, I felt that it needed to be a story, the story needed to be told and I went around and asked some of the people who frequent the club, uh, not the club, but the uh, Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center where the jazz happening took place. And I got some wonderful remarks and wonderful stories uh, from them and I want to share them with you tonight. But first, a little house clean, cleaning and information for you to know of what's going on with me and Banana Putting Jazz. Uh, first of all, I'd like you to know that we again, have been doing this for virtually for the past uh, uh, seven months now. And it's been a wonderful evening of presentations. And uh, one of the things that I really like about it is that I get the opportunity to, to invite jazz musicians to perform and do their thing. And um, we've had some great ones on board over the past year. So, uh, feel very much blessed to be a vehicle to keep the music alive here in in the city and spread it throughout the world. Now, just to let you know that March 8th is going to be my next Banana Putting Jazz, and I always do themes, and this particular theme is going to be Beautiful Young Ladies and Jazz, and this particular one is going to be a night where I celebrate princesses, beautiful young ladies in jazz, and it's going to feature Leonike Schubel on piano, Izzy Guzman on trombone, Kayleen Bryant on bass, Mimi Block on violin and vocals, and Taylor Moore on drums and guitar, and she'll be singing also. These are all fabulous young musicians who happen to uh, be award-winning musicians on top of that, you know, so we're going to have a 
a grand time celebrating these young ladies. Brooklyn Rome Neal's Banana Put in Jazz and the Brooklyn Public Library, Walt Whitman Branch Presents. And this is going to be a part of the 19th annual Ladies Jazz, Ladies Got jo Chops, Women's History Month Music and Arts Festival. So we're proud to be able to combine all these efforts together to present a wonderful evening of jazz for you. And next, I'd like you to know that uh, I'm in production with my partner in this crime of passion we call theater, Mr. Ishmael Reed. And we have a new play that's coming out. Uh, it's going to be a virtual reading of it. It's going to take place March 20th and 21st at the, a New Yorkian Poets Cafe um, Zoom site. And that's going to be, it's called The Slave Who Loved Caviar, a new play by Ishmael Reed. Um, and Ishmael takes, takes on or takes aim at the New York City art world, dealing with the life and career of Jean-Michel Basquiat, examining racism directed at Basquiat and the ways that Andy Warhol and the arts establishment and fashion industries exploited and profited from uh, Mr. Basquiat's artistry. So please check that out. Again, that's going to be March 20th and 21st. And it's going to be on the New Eurekan Poets Cafe.org website. So go to that. Uh, also, I would like for you to please subscribe to this, this um, YouTube channel uh, so that I can get more information to you about the actions and things that I'll be doing over the years. Hopefully, it'll be over the years, but in, in the near months to come. So, again, hit that little button to the side and subscribe to. The YouTube channel. Uh, now we're going to talk about 966, but before we do, you have to know that jazz in Brooklyn goes way back to actually goes back to the 20s, but in, in the, from the 40s to from the late 40s to the the 60s, that there were about uh, about 24 jazz clubs in in Brooklyn and more than Harlem and Manhattan clubs like the Baby Grand the Club Lamage Blue Cornet Elmo's Lounge Kingston Lounge the Club Continental Putnam Jazz Central the Baby Grand a Seville Lounge Tony's Club Grandine uh, which had the famous Max Roach who was, was one of the guys who booked that club and and Thelonious Monk used to play there when he couldn't get his cabaret card, uh, when his cabaret card was suspended for him from him. So um, these were great jazz clubs and there's great artists who attended and performed in these clubs throughout Brooklyn, like Monk, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Lee Morgan, Edda Jones, Whitten Kelly, Carmen McRae, Again, Max Roach, who lived in Brooklyn, Charlie Mingus, Art Blakey, Oscar Pettiford, Elmo Hope. All these cats came to Brooklyn to uh, perform their jazz uh, artistry. And uh, Brooklyn has been around for, and is still around doing some great jazz. Other clubs in Brooklyn that exist or have existed were clubs like the East back in 90, 1969, Up Over Jazz Cafe, founded by Bob Myers. Again, the East was founded by G2 Weyusi, who also founded the Central Brooklyn Jazz, uh, um, Central Brooklyn Jazz Group. Um, then we have also Brownstone Jazz with Deb, Deb Mack there, that's still in existence, but it's been closed down because of COVID. You have a Sisters Place, which still do outdoor um, jazz events and. For My Suite, which was founded by G2 Weusi and his wife, Angela, uh, which I had the fortune of actually opening the, the first jazz event at that club. And then there was Rustic's Tavern. Er, my good friend Eric Frazier was doing, two, was doing Tuesday nights there. And uh, Williamsburg Jazz Festival, uh, Jazz Club. And um, again, uh, some wonderful community activities that took place in Brooklyn dealing with jazz, uh, not to mention the wonderful jazz festivals. 
uh, the Mega Evers Festival, the Central, um, the Central Brooklyn Consortium Festival that they always have every year, the uh, Weeksville Heritage Festival, of course, Eric Frazier's Jazz Festival that he has in Fort Greene Park over the years. So again, and uh, let's not forget the Jazz at the Triangle, which I've been fortunate to perform at almost every year. Uh, Richard Green put that together and we're so wonderfully indebted to him for making that a shrine over there, uh, ne right next to, uh, on, on uh, Eastern Parkway, close to the, the Brooklyn Museum. So with the, all that said, like I said, there's been some wonderful um, happenings in Brooklyn around jazz. And uh, we have tonight the opportunity to tell the story of one of the great happenings or places in jazz for, that people came out and they frequent over the years. And one of those spots was none other than Club uh, Jazz 966 located in of the Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center. A night uh, about 30 years ago, this, this club has been in, in existence and um, has brought together some wonderful artists over the years and a, a, a happening where senior citizens had the opportunity to come out, listen to great music and not only listen to it, but they would get up on the floor and dance to this music and have such a wonderful time. Uh, every Friday night, this was happening throughout the, the winter, spring, uh, spring months and the summer, they took a little break and came back again. And uh, it was for years and years. And I decided, I said, well, listen, there's a story behind this and, and we need to tell this story because this is a part of our history. This is black history and it shouldn't be um, forgotten. And, and uh, so I went around with my camera and I uh, shot things uh, and shot some of the people who were in the club, uh, not shot them with guns, of course, <laughs> but I shot them with my camera. And I'm so happy I did because these folks will tell you the story that I've been able to capture. And I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy Jazz 966 Jazz Forever Young. Mr. Sanfin, what did G2 Uzi mean to 966 Jazz? Jazz, jazz 966 was a part, jazz, in, in fact, jazz, uh, G2 Uzi was an honorary member of Jazz 966. And that goes back to the founding of the Central Group and Jazz Consortium when he was president. He, along with Tori McCartney and others, uh, formed this organization back in, the, I think it was 04. 05. And uh, G2 has been a con in fact, uh, Jazz 966 originated, if you will, from the concept of the East uh, music program, uh, cultural program, jazz. When the East uh, went out of business, we took over. We don't say we didn't took to take over, but that concept of, he of community jazz, a place for, place for people to come from the community to hear. Performers, professional performers, uh, germinated by uh, the East and GQYUC. So he played a major role in the development of Jazz 966. It's just not what we call a gig. It's a spiritual homage to my ancestors through my father. Because through him, I met some of the finest people you could think of in Brooklyn. Like you said, I love to see him dance. I love to see him doing that swing and all that. It's a good thing. To to be a part of this um, 966 phenomenal, yeah. Because uh, and for many years, many people were working 966, and nobody told me that. And I said, they got called me. Said this is 966. Pen. I said, really? I said, I, I never heard. Of it. He said, well, uh, I'm willing to. Uh, I want you to come and perform it. And if you come ready for them, you something to present to them. Well, Jazz at 966 um, 
uh, is, is a very wonderful place for me. Um, I've been coming here since they instituted the jazz at 966. Um, I had also seen Oscar Peterson and his trio, his major trio, back in the mid-60s in Nuremberg, Germany. I think it was that same year we were able to listen to it and uh, listen to him, them play, and then get up close. And then that same year, I saw Duke Ellington with all his icons, John Hodges, Ray, uh, um, not Ray, uh, Mercer Ellington, Sam Woodyard, and all those guys. So I enjoyed their music. There in Germany, in Nuremberg, Germany, we were allowed to go down front after the concert and talk to them, ask questions. So moving forward, after my military career was finished, I finished here in New York. I couldn't do what I wanted to do in Auburn, Alabama. So I came back to New York, and New York was the mecca of the music for me. And so uh, when I started putting together some music projects at my church to raise funds, people know that I learned that I was like jazz and like swing dancing. So someone told me about Jazz 966. So I went there, and lo and behold, they were playing all the different musicians was coming there, and I learned that it was a community organization that was designed to help keep America's classical music alive, as well as some of that connecting music. Born here in Brooklyn, and I'm still in Brooklyn. I have been here all of my life, and I was born in 1933, which makes me, when my birthday comes this October, makes me 80 years of age. Dance, I think that dance is a therapy. I think dance is healthy. It should be a place there on, on Saturday and Sunday nights and dance if it's for, for senior citizens at a good price. I first came to 966, I, I recommended it through a friend of mine. And I, hadn't, I wasn't doing too much at the time. She said, well, you know, they had nice music and nice dancing at a club that called at the Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center at 966. I know every Friday I can go listen to some music. And basically it's going to be some form of jazz. If not jazz, it's going to be the blues or, or music that relate to me as a black man. And so that's, that's another reason why it's important. Because the people that come there play my music. And it's being played by people who look like me. And so that's very rewarding because a lot of these clubs now, not only is the audience doesn't look like me, the musicians don't look like me. Oh, 966 uh, really filled the void with me because uh, I got involved maybe 10, 12 years ago. And uh, I had been associated with a very dear friend of mine who was a, a jazz writer named Clarence Atkins. And in that relationship, we'd catch all of the jazz sets all over Manhattan, mostly, for years. And uh, Clarence passed. Uh, later, and uh, that left sort, sort of a void. And I don't know who exactly pointed me to uh, 966, but I went there and it reminded me of the Savoy Ballroom. And then I met uh, this girl, Barbara. Barbara Sidbury. Oh, it's my birthday every week because I feel if you wake up, it is a birthday. You have no guarantee you're going to be here on the day you were born. So every week, every day that I wake up is a birthday to me, and I celebrate. Ancestors created Sam Penn continued tradition of letting our people know how much we've contributed to this world and how much we've contributed to this country, how much we've contributed in Brooklyn. 
So by having the musicians, it brings back memories, it brings back culture and pride. I was attending um, a 60th birthday party for a good lifelong buddy of mine, Sarah Dunn, uh, at 966. She also had a best friend named Peggy Mills. And it so happened that Sarah was the type of person that just brought people together. Uh, she asked me to, well, I went over and I asked um, Peggy to dance because I was extremely attracted by her, her silver hair. And I was forgot that I was there with a whole group of people. They thought that I had just forgotten all about them. And Peggy tickled me because she would constantly tell me to back up when we were dancing that I was in her space. <laughs> and I just um, was attracted to her, very, very much so. Uh, and we got to, when, my, when, when Sarah asked me to accompany her outside to get a cab, um, if you knew Sarah, I said, well, Sarah, I would not only get her a cab, I'll take her home. And if you knew Sarah, Sarah cursed me out of that moment because <laughs> she wasn't asking for all that. She was just asking to assist her girlfriend in finding a cab. Um, we exchanged numbers and she was a person that I could talk to, uh, talk with rather. And we spent hours talking. We'd be on the telephones at four o'clock in the morning sometimes, just talking and talking. And it was interesting because I think we became friends before we became lovers. And I looked forward to uh, marrying her, uh, which happened. Uh, we're now going into our sixth year of marriage. Uh, so <laughs> there's, there's hope for a lot of us folks out there. We're going into our sixth year of marriage. Her daughter could be no more to me than if she was my biological daughter. Her son's basically the same. So um, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure. And the interesting thing is that she likes to travel and I love traveling. So we, we have common interests and we're working on common goals. Uh, and like I said, time and time again, one of the features of uh, Peggy that I enjoy most is that she loves to dance and I love to dance. One of my favorite topics is the organizing and the birth of Jazz 966. And that was a joy to behold. That was an organizing effort by my late wife, Tariq McCartney, and Sam Penn, the director of the Fort Greene Senior Citizens Council, where the jazz has been held, oh, must be going on 25 years now. And let me go back and take you there. When Sam and, gee, I can't remember his name on the top of my head, but Sam was one of his closest friends Go, went to Manhattan often to enjoy the night out and jazz, be it the Blue Note, the Gate, the Vanguard, and so forth. And I mean, the night out in Manhattan could cost you, you know, 100 up was 100 to 200 dollars. And they sat in there one night and said, we can do this at our place in Brooklyn. Uh, well, you had enough, Donald? And he's on the floor, he says, yeah, I think I did. Uh, you got to stretch them. We have politicians that come down. We have people from the clergy, people from education, people, people from all walks of life. I was a couple of years younger than I am now. It must have been about 10 years ago. And a friend of mine by the name of a coastal cop kept begging me to come down to 966. Well, I had been to Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center years before because I am an actress, I'm a poet and all of that. And I was performing in a production by Brother Emira Baraka called Slave Ship. And when I performed, we performed at Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center. That whole room, not the one that we're dancing in now, but that they had upstairs, I believe. And that whole room was transformed into a slave ship. And we performed there for several months at, at Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center, and it was wonderful. And I never went back again. But going back to a coastal Cobb, I had been in the seminary studying um, interfaith interfaith um, religion and spirituality 
and my whole life was centered around in that area and I was quiet minding my business and and a coastal kept begging me come down to 966 no she said Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center I said I'm not going down there with all of those old folks I'm not ready for that and I have no time to get involved with that kind of foolishness <laughs> I didn't say foolishness but I was just into my own world so finally she kept encouraging me she says you'll have a great time well that was 10 years ago and I've never stopped coming. The name Keeper of the Secret was thrust upon me uh, by a gentleman by the name of Michael Howard. He uh, felt that uh, this uh, more or less uh, suited uh, my personality. So I had nothing to do with it. So uh, Keeper of the Secrets, they asked me, well, what secrets are there that you keep? Say, well, that's a secret. You get older and you go to affairs, everybody treats you as if you're old. So everybody gets up and calls you sir and gives you your seat. Um, whereas uh, here in 966, we're all in the same age group. And people forget that even older people still like to party. I can't remember the uh, first time I went to 966. And um, by that, I mean sometimes you meet people, not that people come to your life and you don't know it when you met him. Nobody ever introduced him. And that's what like 966, nobody ever introduced me, said, let's go down to 966, or I can't remember the first time. But I knew that it was something special, and it was something different. Because not that they just played the music, they danced to the music. Where can you go and find people dancing to this music that we call jazz? That doesn't happen anymore. And I was so proud when I got my first job, and uh, Sam said, Jeff, you know, this ain't a concert. You got to make these people dance. And I tried my best to make them dance. And every time I come back here, I understand that they have to dance to this music. Now, sometimes I say, we're going to play a song that we want to play. I have uh, some wonderful and great memories of 966 Jazz. Uh, it's my, all my family has been there with me. Uh, the first time I ever played trap drums, I played at 966 Jazz. Uh, when my first my CD, Find Yourself Then Find Me, came out. I did my debut there at 966 Jazz for that. And uh, I, my daughter, who is a, a prolific writer, she's wrote several books, and she's been up for the uh, NAACP Image Awards with uh, some of the greats. Uh, well, she performed there with me. That's Duewa Frazier. And uh, also my dad, uh, I took him there with my brother, and he actually danced there and had a great time, my dad. It's 92 years old. He'll be 93 in uh, about a week and a half now. First, my children didn't like the idea. I said, look, I'm 80 years old. I want to have one birthday party in Brooklyn, so that's my love, and I have the other party in the city. Well, I wound up having a party for a whole month everywhere. But 966, I was so happy I invited 100 people that night. Uh, 966 is the greatest place for... Um, People our age should go and have a good time. I don't like to have all that cursing and carrying on. It's, it's not, I love it. I dance to what I feel. I don't know whether it's good dance or not, but certain instruments like saxophone is a sexy instrument. When I hear it, it just makes me do certain moves. You know, the drums make me do your shoulder. The saxophone makes you move your hips. And, and, uh, it's just what you feel. I, 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 I never studied dancing. I just do what I want to feel. I hope you enjoyed that little short um, tribute to 966 Jazz, one of the um, diamonds in Brooklyn, the Bethesda Stuyvesant area of Brooklyn that um, I've been privileged to attend and just have some wonderful nights with some awesome people and great music. Again, it's Black History Month. We celebrate our leaders. We celebrate our musicians, our vocalists, and all the great people who make things happen in our society. With that said, I would like to pay more tribute to 
Black History Month by ending it on this note with this wonderful tribute by none other than Chapman Roberts, the maestro extraordinaire who put together a grand show at Carnegie Hall, which I was a part of as one of the, the vocalists in the choir, along with a hundred black artists who performed that night. And this is a tribute to our great artists who are no longer with us. Enjoy it and have a blessed evening and continue to celebrate our blackness.
Thank you so very much. And please, you know, to keep jazz alive, we do need your support. I do need your support. I have a banana pudding jazz um, series that I've been doing. As I said, I've been doing it for uh, the past 17 going on 18 years. And now we're virtual and you can help by making a contribution to Rome Neal's Banana Pudding Jazz. Go to my website, become a sponsor, whatever it takes to keep the music alive and keep um, paying musicians to do what they love to do also. So I thank you again for tonight and being a part of this magical evening of celebrating a wonderful spot in, in Brooklyn, 966 Jazz. And uh, if they continue to open in the near future because of the pandemic, they, we had to close down, but if, if they continue to open in the near future, go out and support and be a part of that magic that has been created over 30 years at that wonderful club founded by none other than Dr. Sam Penn and his friends who wanted to bring jazz to their community. Thank you so very much. Support Banana Foot and Jazz. Like Sam, I'm trying to keep the music alive. Peace and blessings.